Welcome to the Consciousness Anywhere and Everywhere podcast. I am Shannon O'Hara, and I invite you to a completely new world of possibilities. Welcome to Consciousness Today, everybody. I am joined by a woman who I deeply respect and who I have known for many years, Susanna Mittemeyer. Hi, Shannon. Oh my God, you make me cry. Just like that. (laughs) So Susanna is also a colleague in Access Consciousness, but Susanna is very special and very important because she has created and founded something called Pragmatic Psychology, which is also the title of a book that you authored. Um, you, Susanna is a clinical psychologist and has been for many years and has taken, from my point of view and perspective, a very different path um, in regards to mental health. So I know it's a deeply interesting topic and one that has you have also gone through a lot of cont- controversy around. And I'm just super um, excited to ask you a bunch of questions and introduce this new possibility to this audience. So thank you so much, Susanna, for taking the time today. Thanks for having me excited. (laughs) So let's start. So what is pragmatic psychology? Well, um, a lot of stuff out there is about the dramatics and uh, why things don't work and how things don't work and looking for a solution, like already deciding that something is wrong that needs to be fixed. And the pragmatic approach is about, hey, what works? And how can we make it work? And what's possible here? So it's more on, um, it's more this quest for what else is possible than this normal way of dealing with things where it's about a problem and a solution. So, you know, it's, it's basically not, it's going beyond dramatic to pragmatic and uh, (laughs) where it's, um, it's so different to work as like both parts. It's so different to work as, as a practitioner, as someone who works with people. And it's also very different for people as an approach because people coming um, for help, for support, for coaching, for psychology, for sessions, like they have been handed with the perspective. Something is definitely wrong with me. And um, I have a name for it or I might have a name for it, a label. A a diagnosis, yeah. Yes, yeah, a diagnosis. And um, it's all set, you know, I have, you know, I have words for it. I have symptoms for it. I have it all, you know, figured out. And now it's about fixing me. So I fit. So other people are happy with me. So that's like the dramatic approach that this reality offers us so many times in different modalities. And it's, like when I when I t- was trained in psychotherapy, and I did different kinds of psychotherapy, um, you know, cognitive and psychodynamic. I I tried all all of them, you know, because I was really like, okay, so what works best? And all of them were asking me to look at, okay, so there's something that needs to be fixed. And then I met these people. I met these people with so-called diagnosis, and I had a really hard time. I had a really hard time comprehending the focusing on that wrongness. All I could see was people who are different, people who see the world in a totally different way, who have a different perspective, who have a different awareness, who might see things that other people don't see. And they, because they don't fit into that, box of normality or because they see things or are aware of things that people cannot have, that might not have words or other people don't see the same thing or see it in the same way, they have not been acknowledged for that huge difference and perspective and awareness that they uniquely have. So because of that, it's been made wrong rather than, wow, this is a treasure box of possibilities. This is a treasure box of capacities that if they just have one single person or something that contributes to them acknowledging that they can grow 
they can utilize it. They can use it to thrive, to create their lives, to inspire other people. And that's where this, hey, something else must exist out there. Something else must be possible for this. And this is how, this is how pragmatic psychology was born. So can you, uh, what is the definition of psychology? It's this, it's, there are different ways, but some, uh, like one of is the study of behavior, um, the psychology of man, you know, understanding, um, you know, how people function and why they function that way. So psychology is obviously, it's, I, I, I don't know sort of where to state this because the people listening to this could have such varying depths of knowledge about psychology, but I'll just state it from my perspective, which is quite a lay person. Um, the approach to psychology and the schools of psychology are widely varying and ranging from country to country, from practitioner to practitioner, but there are like unifying psychology boards I know around the world because it's seen as a medical practice. And I know that you've had to deal a lot with that um, because you've taken a really different approach. Because I know when I first met you, you were practicing psychology at a clinic in Southern Sweden. Yeah. As a traditional psychologist, you know, and then I know you found access, started exploring it for yourself, and then started looking at how you could utilize and apply that to the people who are s- simply looking to not feel crazy, you know? So can yeah. you explain that transition of using the sort of like the traditional approach and then what changed and then what you started utilizing and the difference you saw? Hmm. So what changed was, um, well, I was... I did different things in my, in my work as a psychologist. I did, you know, a lot of neuropsychological testings, psychotherapy. It's like people were brought to me for, Hey, does this person, what kind of diagnosis does this person have? And then I would take out my test kit and I would, you know, do all these tests and then I would write a report and I would talk with the person or the family. And that was like, okay, so here you go. That's, that's what you're, that's, that's kind of like who you are now and find a way to deal with this. And these are the ways how you can, you know, deal with that uh, label, with that diagnosis, you know, support groups or therapy or medication or whatever. So that was what I was working with. And uh, I was also working in child oncology before, and it was a lot about, you know, um, dealing with staff and with parents and family and, you know, finding a way to deal with. It's interesting. The word I hear you saying a lot is dealing with. Yes, exactly. And, and dealing with the trauma of, yeah. I get that. The, well, obviously in, all, in oncology, obviously the trauma of cancer, especially yeah. children with cancer. And then the trauma of being different, coming, being, maybe hearing voices and that being traumatizing. So dealing with. So yeah, exactly. Disaster prevention. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's, cool. that's, that's where, yeah, that's where you started disaster prevention. Yeah. But that's what we, like, that's exactly the approach that I was handed, not only in psychology, but my whole life. I mean, that's, that's what we, that's what we deal with, you know, like here's a problem, deal with it. And, and so, okay. So I did this for a while and, you know, I did as I was educated and tried it all out different, you know, modalities, but in the back of my head, there was always this, I was not satisfied. I was like, this can't be it. This can't be the way how we contribute to people becoming greater. This can't be how we facilitate change. And it was in the back of my head. And I, I was on my way to quit my job. I'm like, this can't be it. Like either I said, I really said in my world so intensely, either I find something different or I'm going to, do a different job. I don't care what it is, you know, like I know I invested all this time and all this energy in this study and all of this, but this can't be it. This is not, this is not how how it should be. And then I, you know, I found access consciousness or, you know, however you want to say it. And I, I got these tools that for the first time acknowledged what's truly possible and that Voice like they had it voiced things in a way that I always knew, but nobody has ever said it. Hmm. Like what? Do you remember? Um, that there's never anything wrong. Like there is 
everything that seems like a problem is actually a possibility. Everything, everything that seems like a problem is something, if you twist it and ask questions around it, it just shows you a firework of what else is possible. And so that just made in my world. And I went, okay, this. And first I just applied it all myself. I was my own guinea pig and I did all these classes and I'm like, okay, so I'm going to see what this does in my own world. And I'm like, this is so awesome. And then I looked at how can I apply this in my work with my patients? And I applied the tools, both in my way of doing testings, the neuropsychological testings and therapy. And everything changed. Like for me, it was so much easier. I was not tired at the end of the day. And, I, you know, every weekend I would just sleep. I would not have a life because um, I was so drained out by the way I had learned to do therapy and work with people. And also my clients, they were like, there was a lightness and an ease in their world that wasn't available before. And also my colleagues would go, I don't know what you do. I don't want to know what you do. Please don't tell us. But can you take this patient? Can you take that patient? And they would hand me like the worst cases basically, but they didn't want to hear what I was doing. <laughs> it's like it so challenged their, what they have learned and decided is real and true. I guess I kind of love that they didn't just crucify you right out the gate. They just were <laughs> like, don't tell us, but do the magic, but do it like in secret because, because I can't change my point of view enough to really receive information about what you're doing. So that's, so I kind of, I kind of have a couple questions, sort of like, could you talk about a little bit more what exactly you were doing different? Like just one example of something that was the change in the beginning. Um, well, the very first, uh, thing that I, it's not anything I did. It's just a perspective I changed. Mm, Okay. Um, it's, it's, and it's, it's always been in my world, but having it acknowledged that, that it's not wrong, the way I see things could be different. I could have more playground to let it out and play with it. So, and that was in mutual ways towards me and towards my clients. So first I realized, okay, so I always knew that working with people can be different. It can be ease. It can be about tickling out their capacities. It can be about, you know, um, contributing to them, accessing everything they know that is so different and seems so weird and insane for other people that is actually the sanity that expands their world and inspires our world. And that is something I got acknowledged. So I had a different space in my world. I had a different uh, relaxation to not make that part of what I know wrong, but I am like, okay, that could be something I can use. Okay, cool. So then I relaxed. I had a different perspective. I, um, that also contributed to me being able to acknowledge in my patients that, hey, that thing that's called diagnosis, anxiety, depression, ADHD, schizophrenia, whatever. Hey, what is it really? Let's really question everything. Let's take away every answer, every conclusion, every label, every projection, every expectation, everything every anybody ever told you this is, anything you Googled, anything you looked up, anything that this is, that's just for this very moment erase it, delete it, let it go, and really be super questioning, diligently questioning of exactly what it is and what it is for you, what it is for you uniquely. And wow, that was so huge in their world because first they were like, totally like, what do you, what, what do you mean questioning? What? Like, because since we were children, all of us were told, no, don't do this, don't do that. And we were, we're, we're fed with answers and conclusions. And so like, they were like, what do you mean? I know, what do you mean? I know, what do you mean? You're not going to tell me what I should do to fix me. What do you mean? I have a treasure box. What? So they were a bit like, like in a lack of better words, overwhelmed or startled by that approach. But I was just like keeping on asking, keeping on asking. And then they were, it just like opened up this, this, it cracked this this barrier, this wall that they have been had their whole lives. And then they were like, oh, wait a second. 
I know. And then we were practicing these tools of awareness of, okay, so what's light is true, what's heavy is a lie. Okay, so that gave them a new space of navigating through through the crap that they have been, you know, dealing with. And they're like, okay, so what's light is true. Okay, so follow the lightness. So we would start by ignoring the heaviness, you know, because that's something you're supposed to focus on and analyze and, and, and dig in and do stuff. And so we were like, okay, let's ignore that for a while and let's focus on what's light. So we were, you know, so, and that, you know, that took practice, of course. And through that, they were starting to see those things where, okay, so let's, you know, with my anxiety, okay, so that's, what's the heavy part? So what's the lightness underneath it? What's the, you know, what's, what's that, what's my body actually telling me? If I don't have a point of view that my anxiety is something wrong, or it's, it means I'm going to die or I'm freaking out. What is it really? What is it really? What is my body telling me? What am I aware of? And they would go, and it's, it started to create this space where mostly it was about their, and is about their huge, immense level of awareness that is so beyond words many times. And most of them have been forced to use words and use your words and define it and call it something. And, and so they were invited to, okay, sometimes you might have words for what that awareness is, and sometimes you don't. And so acknowledge both, acknowledge the parts where you have words for and what you don't have words for. And so most of it was an extreme level of awareness. So then we would acknowledge that. And then we would use the tools to have ease with that awareness. And then how to utilize that awareness to create. Like, for example, um, so many examples, but there was one guy who was coming with ADHD and he like he couldn't get anything, anything done. And he started one business and the next business and he failed. And then he created debt and all of that. And, and so we acknowledge that, okay, so his awareness, his extreme awareness of so many things simultaneously is not a curse, it's a gift. So how can you use it? And he found a way of creating businesses, multiple businesses successfully in a way that works for him. Because that is a huge gift to be aware. And then, you know, like, how can you make it work for you? So, so many examples on um, details of that. So I hope that. Uh, it, well, it's really, so what I kept hearing you talk about in that was, oh, like, I like, I liked how you said um, playing with awareness and you kept actually using the word awareness a lot in that, which <clears throat> is not. So it's like, how many of you guys out there listening or watching this on YouTube right now, when you, when we say awareness, do you know what that means? Do you have, like, so I know for me, definitely when I started hearing about this stuff called awareness and like, I didn't really get it. And to be honest, I would say I'm still discovering what awareness is and can be more and more all the time. Um, and one of the primary tools, like the foundational bottom stage tools of bottom stage. Well, first stage tools of access is this question of like, who does this belong to? And just that, that, that there is a possibility that what you're experiencing, whether it's feeling crazy or being angry or depressed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, might actually be your awareness of something else. Like that right there, that's such a massive difference in how we approach dealing with what's showing up in our lives. Um, and I mean, so have you seen a lot of conversation around awareness and like, what are you aware of and that you're aware in a lot of other mainstream or popular psychological circles? More and more. It's Is changing. That interesting. That's yeah. interesting. I'm and sure I, you have nothing to do with that change <laughs> at all. Like, <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> um, so it's, it's, uh, when I started, it's like, that was not a conversation that could be heard. Um, like it was all about, it's, everything is about you. Whatever is troubling you is something it's personal. Wow. It's about yeah. you, you need to look at your own stuff. You need to investigate your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, where they come from. And there are different ways to do this and different approaches, but it was about you. The, the questioning perspective about, hey, wait a second, everything you think is about you, your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, everything you take personal, ask, 
is this really you? Is this really coming from you or is this coming from something huge or larger called your awareness? Something from, from, oh, could it be that you actually pick up how other people are doing? Could it be that you pick up for other people what's going on in their heads and their worlds? Could you be able, like, are you aware of the weather changing? You know, what the earth is doing? Like, it's it's not just people, it's animals, it's plants, everything. And that is something that I had a psychology conference at a psychiatry conference recently. And I talked about the tool, who does this belong to? And it could be heard. It's like people said, wow, thank you. I've seen this in practice. Uh, nurses were saying, thank you for saying that because I've seen this in practice. This is what I've observed in my patients all the time, but I didn't have words for it. And so it can be heard now more than ever that it's not everything is about you. A lot majorly is actually where you pick up what's going on around you like a radio receiver and you haven't acknowledged it. And there's also, if you go to the next step, you can use it to have more ease and possibilities. Yeah, I was just recently like, how the, so an example from something I was having recently, I noticed I was having like a couple of days where I kept on thinking to myself in my head, like, I'm really angry, like I'm really furious. And, and then I would, and then I would, I would hear myself and I'd be like, why? Like, where is this coming from? Like, I, I kept, and I, cause there was like no reason, like there was nothing going on. And I was like, why am I angry? Why am I thinking I'm angry? And this kept going on for a couple of days. And so finally, like, I was like, okay, wait a minute. Okay. If this isn't about me, what am I aware of? And <laughs> I love how the universe works. What am I aware of? And then three days later, I had three women contact me from Saudi Arabia about, hey, Shannon, would you be interested in coming? And as soon as they made contact, I was like, is this where the anger has been coming from? And it was totally, and then it, everything got lighter, which is what you were talking about earlier about what's true is light. So as soon, like, I couldn't actually identify what the anger was. I knew it wasn't me. And no matter what I did, I couldn't really, I was like, I'm not angry with my husband. I'm not, I have no, it was, it, I went through every reason that I thought I should be angry. And I was like, well, none of that's really going on. Like, I'm not actually angry, but it was like, I kept on thinking I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm like, okay, so this isn't about me. What is this? Three days later, the invitation to Saudi Arabia. I went, is this where the anger has been coming from? Lightness. And it, and then I was, my, my whole, like my whole psychology changed as soon as the sort of, I was able to identify where that was coming from. But I've also had a lot of times when I haven't been able to actually identify where the mood is coming from. And it's that knowing that it's never me that has allowed, it's never mine. It's always awareness and I'm not wrong. It's something that's going on somewhere in my husband's universe or in my dad's universe or in the future. It's such a different way of being. So it's super really interesting to hear you say talk about how you actually went to like a mainstream psychology convention and function and spoke and talked about who's this belong to. And people were like, totally, I'm totally getting how that applies. You know, that's a revolution in the way that people function. Yeah. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. Don't suffer your life, create your life. Learn the tools, processes, and ways in which you can have your life change in dynamic, amazing, and profound ways. Visit accessconsciousness.com to find out what magic is available for you today. So I don't know if it's, I'm actually like super curious and I don't know how much you like want to talk about this, but I know that you've gone through a lot in terms of what I would call specific persecution and like judgment against your new way of looking at psychology. Um, what is like the fun parts you could share <laughs> the <laughs> parts you could share about that? And I think we could laugh about it now because you've gone through a lot of it and come yeah. out the other side like yeah. way stronger and really have been a massive contribution to changing stuff. Yeah. So it's like what I learned from that is whenever some whenever you're doing something that's out of the ordinary and different. Yeah. 
Um, and people judge you, it's a huge compliment. It's a huge acknowledgement of you're doing something that is changing something. And we're not taught to see it that way. We're actually taught to see it the other way. Oh my God, I'm doing something wrong. And we stop and we cave in. But, and I did that. I did that too. And I, and I, and again, so heavy. And I learned, wait a second, it's getting heavy. I'm going into heaviness. Wait, there's a lie here. What's the lie here? What's the truth here? And I realized, okay, the truth here is actually the fact that someone is trying to do something against me or stop me or whatever. What is it? What am I aware of? What's really going on? Okay. Is it, is it, am I doing something wrong or am I doing something strong? Am I doing something that's actually challenging the mainstream, challenging the structures of this reality and, and, you know, opening up something new. And I'm like, you know what? And then I looked at people like Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness. I looked at people like, uh, like all these people who created something like Tesla, Nikola Tesla, like all these people who are in the past, who created something amazing and they were judged and they were like persecuted. And, but they didn't stop. They were like, come on. I know where I want to, like, I know what the future requires. I know this. And I'm so committed to that future that nothing, 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 nothing gets to stop me. And I, I like, I'm not going to give myself the luxury to stop and to cave in and to be sad or angry. I can do that. And I allowed myself to do this for a while. And, you know, like Oscar nominated, just enjoying it, go for it, over it, done, next step. Okay, so what future would I like to see on this planet? You know, a future where people know what they know. A future where people actually know nothing is ever wrong. Everything is always strong. And you can change your life no matter what happened in the past, no matter what abuse or stuff or drug abuse or, or sexual abuse or, or horrible people you had in your past. It does not, it's not relevant for the creation of your future. You have choice in every moment to create your future. And, and I, I looked at all these spaces that, you know, where I know, okay, this is the future I'd like to create. And everything that's trying to stop me, thank you very much. I'm going to say, even on an official podcast, and fuck you very much. <laughs> and I'm going to, you know, and I'm going to use that energy to, to get greater, to thrive, to serve. And so I learned to use like all this negative judgment and all this uh, vilification as a platform to, to thrive. And because, you know, if any of you guys out there get judged, why do you think people judge you? Because you're, because you're small or because you're great and because you're ch challenging people's limitations. And what if this is a good thing? What if this is exactly what a leader does? the willingness and the courage to challenge people's fixed points of view and to know something greater is possible. So yeah, there were a lot of different things going on and, um, and like, you know, some, like one time there was this Swedish situation going on in the Swedish television and, uh, and it was so funny and it was an interview and I was a bit, um, naive at that time because I thought when somebody interviews me on TV they're going to use it exactly that same way I had no <laughs> experience in TV and then they were cutting it and doing stuff um, and so they aired it on prime time in Swedish television it was a couple of years ago and I was ready for shitstorm I was ready for being you know getting messages and everything and I got one message where somebody said you should die you're the worst person and then all the, and I'm like, yeah, whatever. And then the other messages were all about, thank you. Thank you for saying something that I always knew. Thank you for what you do. Please tell me more. Uh, a lot of, you know, <laughs> uh, a lot of marriage proposals. So I wrote back to, <laughs> to the person, you know, to the reporter. Thank you so much. You saved me thousands of years in PR. And thank you from my mom. Um, she's very grateful for all the marriage proposals as well. Um, it's calming her world as well. And he never wrote back, but that show got canceled. The reporter was um, sacked. That was not existing on television anymore. And all it created was, you know, more people being interested. 
So it's like, well, there's that old adage. There's no bad, th- there's no bad, yeah. there's no such thing as bad PR. Definitely. Well, you are an inspiration and I, I, I think you speak very modestly, but Susanna is actually quite, you're quite well known, but you're also quite scandalous, but you're also quite adored and quite misunderstood in the psychological, in the psychological communities and circles. I also think it's ironic. Susanna is Austrian. She is from Vienna. So she's from the, the epicenter of the beginning of uh, psychotherapy as a reality on earth you know it, you come from the same place as freud and i just really respect i really respect that you've <sighs> taken a different possibility into the mainstream and not given up because everyone said it's like stop <laughs> so so everyone out there listening who you know is interested in pragmatic psychology, is interested in a different way of dealing with everything that they think is wrong with them. What are some of the, you know, do you have any tips on where to begin uh, the accessing of the pragmatic psychological point of view? Uh, So many, but the first thing that comes up is uh, look at where you're different. Like, how do you like in, in day-to-day situations, um, like when it comes to your kids, when it comes to relationship, your job, where do you see things in a different way? Um, like, you know, when somebody says, ah, oh, you should, you know, just, you know, control your kids or you should, uh, you know, something in that line and you go, hmm, I'm not sure if that is actually necessary. Maybe, maybe there's a different way for me to be with them or ask them questions or, you know, whatever you notice in your day-to-day life where you already are seeing things in a different way, having a different perspective, no, okay, I could do it in this way, but ah, that would be so wrong in other people's eyes, but it would work. You know, that's something I would recommend putting more focus on and more attention on because this is this is where you start to acknowledge the treasure box that you are as a being as a difference where you can make your life easier you can inspire other people but let's just start with you um because there's not everybody wants to be inspired for something different but start with you so you can have something easier but it's like acknowledge where are you different where are you seeing the world in a different way where you see yeah. possibilities and start to celebrate them So can I give an example of start to see where you're different? Because I was thinking about in the beginning of this conversation, I was really like reflecting on most people. I don't know if a lot of the people who listen to the Consciousness Anywhere podcast know this, because I actually never, almost never talk about it on here. Um, It's definitely not the focus of the podcast, but like my sort of like first, I would say my first, the first industry I ever broke into was like the spirit world. Like I was one of those kids that heard voices saw things that weren't there, you know, and, and I, it made me in, as a teenager, I went absolutely crazy. Like I was suicidal for the majority of my teens. I was angry and isolated and couldn't be around people. Cause it was so, I just, it was, I was not doing well, but so what occurred was I started, you know, I was really in bad shape in around age 18 and 19, but at, all along my stepdad, Gary, who's the founder of access was creating access. He was just doing his own thing, but I wasn't really paying attention because it was like the weird stuff my dad did and I totally wasn't interested. And I was just all into myself and my upset and da, 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 da. But finally he sort of kind of like tricked me into like getting my bars run, like the first process and access, which is a light touch on the head. And, and then I remember like calling him up on the phone and just being in tears, like just hysterical and like out of my mind. And within 15 minutes, I was like totally at peace and I couldn't even remember what I was so upset about in the first place. And bit by bit, like I started to sort of lean towards access more because it just made me feel less crazy and less suicidal. And then in my, around age 21, I walked into my living room in Southern California in this tiny little apartment. And like the room was so full of entities, I couldn't see the other side of the room. And I knew it was entities and I freaked out. And it was sort of like that was the start of me embracing this difference, which is, you know, I look at a lot of, there's so much psychological stress and strain and well-being in the world from people denying that they're aware 
even aware of entities, right? Because as soon as you say you're aware of entities, schizophrenic medication, like as soon as you say you hear voices, crazy person. But what I had to really look at was like, yeah, I do hear voices and that's okay. Like I'm different. Now what's different about this? And that's really the beginning of talk to the entities. And it's like say, talk to access and talk to entities completely saved my life, but it saved hundreds of people's lives. People who thought they were totally crazy. So it's really, it's really this, this difference. I, I don't think we can underestimate this word difference. When Susanna says difference, she doesn't just mean like you're different because you're like, you drink your coffee black. She means like we're different in ways of completely these judgeable offenses of difference that are actually the treasure of who we be that are superpowers actually yes but we have to choose to be different we can't just like suffer our difference as though that's like what's wrong with us forever now crucify me and let me die so it's really different on every level and i i so sort of like fantasize slash hope slash don't get too hopeful slash choose it in my own world because I'm really the only one that can be the difference is that there does come a time when instead of people being told they're crazy, they're actually asked, someone asks them a question, like, what are you actually aware of? And then doesn't judge the person and allows that awareness to unfold as the gift that it is so that we become a world full of people who have access to different abilities. That I am asking for that. And, and both of us, we're on, to, we're on to creating that and opening that and so many others. Yes. So I, I you know, it's like, I, we appreciate, we appreciate those of you guys that are listening. Because obviously yes. if you found this, if you're listening to this conversation, you already know something different is possible. And chances are, it's like, how different are you? And it can be daunting to like really acknowledge how different you are because difference, let's face it, it is not supported. You are in everywhere you turn yep. on a psychic level in this world, you are told to fit in, 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 fit in. But do you fit? <laughs> never, never, ever. <laughs> and that's the fun thing. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's such a huge thing to acknowledge that difference and start celebrating it. It is huge. And you're not alone. You're not alone. There are a lot of us weirdos, misfits, you know, so-called crazy people, crazy possible people out there. Just know you're not alone. <laughs> not only are you not alone, but if you're crazy enough and interested enough, check out the resources. You know, it's like, I'll put all of Susanna's links down below in the show notes so you can look at pragmatic psychology for yourself. Um, and it's like, Susanna and I didn't just like pop out of the box, like totally empowered. <laughs> we actually had to use the tools. So we would love to share with any and all of you the tools and the processes that we have gotten so much fortune and so much of ourselves from over the years. Susanna, thank you so much for coming on and taking the time. Super grateful. Thank you so much. I am hugely, deeply, megaly grateful for you. I always love hearing everything that you're up to. I think, Susanna, you have inspired me. You are so prolific and always so productive. And what I, when I hear little snippets of things that you're up to, I'm like, wow, Susanna's really doing a lot. Maybe I should change my point of view and start doing more stuff. So I love that you're out there in the world. Um, and that that you are dealing with some of the, some of the, what I would say is probably some of the hardest stuff to deal with, um, especially in the German speaking world in the land of rightness. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> you have some serious backbone, sister. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Susanna. Thank you so much. Mwah. Thank you for listening to this show. My target is to make consciousness easy to find and choose. So if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a five-star review on iTunes and share this with somebody who you know who might be looking for more consciousness in their life. You can visit me on shannon-ohara.com or talktotheentities.com. And to learn more about the amazing tools of Access Consciousness, you can visit accessconsciousness.com and be sure to subscribe to the podcast. Thank you.